Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my question is for Ms. Allen. Ms. Allen, I've been hearing from farmers across my riding and across Canada and from processors that retail grocery giants are increasing the fees that they charge to the suppliers who uh, sell them produce and processed foods. And I've heard them asking, uh, the retailers are asking suppliers to help them pay for things as store upgrades on their sales floors or on their digital capacity. So I'm wondering, what are some of the ways in which large retailers impose fees and fines on suppliers and what is that their effect? Thank you very much for your, your question. Um, there's a number of ways that retailers can enforce or um, place uh, or, or shift their risk uh, for, for innovation and development and capital plans to the supplier and ultimately the, the primary producer. That's everything from short payment of invoice, invoices, uh, penalties on fulfillment right now, ordering quantities, on certain SKUs and categories are very erratic and ordering systems are automated at retail level. Therefore, um, all of those algorithm, algorithms that run those ordering systems are based on pre-pandemic levels. So thus ultimately the supplier is penalized for the order quantity that has been ordered through the, those systems that haven't been adjusted for the, for the current crisis. Other ways um, is, uh, asking suppliers to disclose uh, trade secrets uh, in order to fund uh, prices and promotions that are out of the supplier's control. Um, and suppliers are, are very nervous about speaking up about this issue because they face the threat of delisting of their product and there is no other way to get their consumer, their price, or sorry, their product to consumers in Canada, except for two selling channels, one retail, one food service. And we know that food service is in, in a, a, very, a very hard way right now. So. Retail be has become uh, effectively one of the only selling channels in Canada. And it's very concerning when a retailer has the power to delist a product. Thank you for that. And, and in my experience as a supplier of produce to some of the big giant grocery retailers, uh, one one thing that's an impediment for, for farmers on the farming end is that we have to wait 90 days sometimes just to receive payment for the goods that we've shipped. And we've shipped... Um, as perishable products. So that's one, another impediment to, to add to your list there. Um, but when, when the retail grocery giants are asking for these increased fees or when they impose these monetary payments or penalties on suppliers, most of the time a supplier can take or leave the option. And what happens in my experience is that if you say, I'm not going to supply to you because I can't afford the, the increases, you can lose your entire business. And that would go the same with, with processors because you're dependent on these um, giant retailers for your income. And, and so I'm just wondering, is there currently an appetite among grocery retailers to discuss these fees uh, and fines and their effects on Canada's food supply? Uh, that's, that's a very good point, and certainly I agree with uh, the, the size and scale of the fees that are being imposed on suppliers in some cases represent the entire operating margin um, of, of smaller and medium-sized businesses. So it becomes very quickly unprofitable, and that business can shut down with one simple notice from a retailer. We were encouraged, however, uh, recently uh, to see an interview uh, by Michael Medline, who is the CEO of Sobeys, uh, who has indicated uh, publicly that he is open to discussing a retail code of conduct. And I think that is critical uh, that we have Canadian-based retailers that are willing to recognize the issue and work toward a better outcome for the consumers ultimately. Great. Um, and also in reading through your brief and, and as I've brought up um, in the House before, the grocery consolidation right now is five major chains, which makes up about 80% of the grocery business in Canada. So from your perspective uh, on a federal government side, I know you've talked about the grocery code of conduct and that does fall under the purview of the provinces. And we hope that maybe we can see the provinces work together with industry. Cause I know a lot of folks in industry have called for a grocery code of conduct, but from a federal perspective, what, what would you like to see from the federal government? Uh, Cause uh, in regards to perhaps from the Competition Bureau or, or what do you see as, as challenges that uh, can be um, mitigated from the federal government on, on this issue? Again, uh, excellent question. Uh, we are calling on the federal government to help establish the framework that the provinces and territories can adopt 
so that there's a consistent implementation of a grocery code of conduct that's ultimately enforceable um, across the country. We think that that, uh, that federal role is a key role uh, in determining uh, basically the, the ability to control price inflation for the consumer and to protect our industry and our primary producers um, in, in, in who ultimately um, produce the food that ends up on, on grocery store shelves. Without that protection, without that grocery code of conduct, we are left then to face and fight independently with uh, large grocery retailers that have an, an enormous imbalance of power over our industry. If our industry, which represents about 7,000 processing plants and 290,000 direct manufacturing jobs in Canada, is not protected and allowed to grow at the same pace, um, that ultimately will affect the farm gate output and the ability to, to, for farmers to get their product to market as well.